kind of story that sends a shiver down your spine. Wait, were there people inside the house? Yes, there are. They're probably dead. A Scottsdale home rigged to explode. It was a tremendous explosion. It just shook the whole house. A young family dead inside. I don't know what has happened, but I just asked for your prayers. The Scottsdale Police Department has ruled this as a triple homicide. Mom, Mary Fisher, 12-year-old Brittany, and 10-year-old Bobby, all killed before the explosion. The only person we are looking for to help fill the puzzle here is Mr. Fisher. The search for answers heats up. They are literally going through every piece of ash in this house. All clues pointing to one person. We now consider him to be a suspect in the murders. Their husband and father. Robert Fisher. Robert Fisher. Robert Fisher. A name that haunts investigators to this day. This is by far the most grisly case I've ever seen. The father turned fugitive, topping the FBI's most wanted list for nearly two decades. His last known steps. The search itself started here. Arizona's high country. Do you think he's still out here? I do. There's always a chance that he's literally standing here watching us. A search that's never really stopped. And we get tips every week. The hunt for Robert Fisher, dead or alive. Just come home, please, Robert. Will we ever know for sure? Out of character and unexplainable. It's still beyond comprehension as far as how this could happen. It's crazy to think it's been 20 years. And at the same time, it feels like it was yesterday. Everything is still beyond it. comprehension for okay. Pastor no, Greg Cantelmo. I've come to realize you don't really know a person totally in depth, even people you think you know. He remembers April 10th, 2001, seeing the flames leaping in the sky a few blocks over from Scottsdale Baptist Church, where the Fisher family would worship. Mary's father was there, and so we started talking. We didn't know what happened at that time. And we just knew that something bad happened. Just pray for us, if you would. Investigators would soon piece together that someone slashed the kids' throats. Mary's too. Mary also shot in the back of her head execution style, all before the house burst into flames. The answers to the why questions are not available. At first, no one knew if Robert was inside too, or whether he was at work, unaware of his family's fate. I don't know what happened, Robert, whether you were a victim or whether you were a victim of Satan. Police would soon name Robert as the lone suspect in his family's murders. Tracing his steps to an ATM in Scottsdale the night of April 9th, Mary's missing Toyota 4Runner in the background. He took out $280, then disappeared. I don't know what the outcome is, folks. Please don't judge my Robert. Mary's father, Bill Cooper, grappling with grief Robert, and grace. We love you. <laughs> Wherever you are, Robert, please. We understand. We love you. Just, just come home, please, Robert. It'd be 10 days before his family got any more answers, if you can even call them that. Right now, all indications are that he is alive. April 20th, Mary's Toyota 4Runner spotted deep in the woods east of Young, Arizona, more than 100 miles north of Scottsdale. The SUV wiped clean, the family's dog Blue guarding it on the outside. Robert Fisher, nowhere in sight. The search certainly gets bigger. Our guys have spent days with no sleep. Do you have an idea? The massive manhunt dead-ended in all directions for 20 years. The last true piece that we have is the vehicle. Which is where Scottsdale Police Detective John Heinzelman comes in. He's been on the case for about seven years now. What's a better way to find him, to find out where should I focus my efforts? His counterpart at the yeah, FBI, Agent to, uh, Taylor Hanna. We don't want him to feel as though he's out there and no one's looking for him anymore, because that's just not the case. But to reinvent a wheel that's been stuck for so long, they have to go back to the beginning. He saw himself as like the head of the household. The Fishers came to Scottsdale from California, where Robert worked as a firefighter before injuring his back. In Arizona, he worked as a surgical tech at the Mayo Clinic. The entire family deeply involved in their church. Mary was very involved. She served with the children's ministry, her children, uh, we're friends with my children. Robert would go to the men's group on Tuesday nights. You think, well, he was a part of the church. and He was in my Bible study. He knew better. He knew better. The weight of the crime crushed their cul-de-sac. By all accounts, Mary was a fantastic mother, and Bobby and Brittany were just amazing children. God gave us Mary for 38 beautiful years. Brittany, just inducted into the National Junior Honor Society. As I think about Brittany's life, she was truly amazing. And Bobby, 
<laughs> He's a firecracker, that's all he is. From the outside, this was a picture-perfect family. But what people didn't know then, Pastor Cantelmo was counseling Robert and Mary through a rough time they in were, their marriage. They were taking some positive steps forward in the midst of working through issues, but the issues weren't anything radically different than what most people go through at some point. Yet, it seemed the couple was on the brink of divorce. A precipice police say Robert vowed to avoid after struggling with his own parents' split. He did not want his family to succumb to the same fate. It's getting divorced. But to murder your family and vanish? You can come up with a hundred reasons, but none of them are, are good. Uh, there's no good answer to the why. Or the where. I am more curious about that 10 days in between. Was he right there in the woods? Did he see the police coming? Did he know his vehicle was going to be found? Anyone who knew Robert then knew this. He was an outdoor kind of guy, an individualist, a survivalist. An avid hunter, versed in Arizona's wilderness, making it tricky for search crews then to know where to start. There's lots of things out here you can eat, lizards, snakes, acorns, just fairly easy to, to hide. 20 years later, this very spot where investigators found Robert Fisher's truck hasn't changed much. It's still dark, dense, and not to mention vast. And there's a lot of speculation whether he made it out of here at all. Is this somebody that we're going to find hiding in the woods in a cabin? Is this somebody that we're going to find in coastal Mexico or, or Central America, for example? Is he a bushman up in Alaska? The theories are endless. One of the prevailing theories is that he's a survivalist, that he's out there living in the woods. To do that as an individual is usually a death card. Professional survival instructor Cody Lundin is as blunt as he is barefoot. Hey, you've come here to talk to me about is it possible for this guy to live off the land for 20 years? And my short answer is hell no. For starters, investigators say there hasn't been any sign of someone living in the woods. Is it possible to leave no trace? You can leave less trace. The problem is every time you're putting your foot down, you're leaving a trace, right? And the climate up there can be harsh. Robert Fisher would have had to have some sort of shelter if he was in the woods at all. And this is an example of what he could have built. And why is shelter so essential when you're living in a terrain like that? You know, it's high mountain country. He's going to be dealing with snow, hypothermia, dehydration, etc. It's a no-go. Plus, most people on the lamb are likely not focused on lunch. There's not a lot of fat to live off on the land out here in Arizona. This is about a time of year when Robert was out. See the flowers here? The flowers come before the fruit. So there's nothing to eat here yet. There will be in two or three months. Without access to steady food and shelter, this theory is low on the list for investigators. In my mind, it's a little far-fetched. Is it a possibility? Maybe, you know, but I think there are a lot of possibilities. Like the caves. Probably crawled in a cave and took his life. That was how a lot of people thought. Investigators say Fisher's SUV was parked near a whole system of caves. All indications are from the footprints that he had been in the cave. And these caves might not be what you're thinking. Investigators say a lot of them start off like this, holes in the earth that span out underground, no clear direction. For what we're standing on is literally honeycombed underneath us, and it runs for miles down there. Making them tough to search, too. At the time, investigators had to bring in a sewer camera to look closer and threw in gas grenades to try and solicit any sign of life. He may have fallen into something and either hurt himself or couldn't get out. Cave groups still search for any evidence of that. And no luck so far. His remains, if they're out there, have never been found. If Robert Fisher died in the wilderness and we haven't found his body, so what? The body decomposes quickly, the critters are onto it, the bones are dispersed, done deal, you're never found again. Another thought, he ultimately left these woods. Less than a mile away, you've got this gigantic bluff, these peaks, all this stuff that where you could disappear. As remote as it is, it's a short walk to Young Highway and less than a mile from the Fort Apache Indian Reservation. That's a sovereign nation. We can't go out there without their escort, without them approving us to be there. Do you think he knew that? I don't think it would have been very difficult for him to know if I just go over that and I keep just moving east, I'll be someplace where they're not going to go check for. Keep in mind, this is all a few months before 9-11. This was before the TSA. This was before the heightened security for travel. The opportunity for him to travel around, to board an airplane, to drive into Mexico is definitely there. 
Early on, investigators thought he could have stashed a getaway car or hitched a ride. If he was on foot, his dog Blue probably would have went with him. Was he trying to misdirect us? But over time... We don't have any hard facts or evidence that he had any help. Everybody that we spoke with from family and friends at the time, I think we've eliminated everyone. And due to technology at the time, investigators don't even have Fisher's full DNA profile. Maybe there is something in another county, there's some unidentified remains that will prove to be Robert Fisher. Maybe he gets picked up or arrested on a different charge and he has a different name. And if he is still alive out there... He doesn't really stand out. You know, he looks kind of like the average guy. He has a noticeably stiff gait from that firefighting injury, a scar on his back, and a gold or missing tooth. He could be living in a small town where he gets paid cash, or he could be living in a big town. You get lost in the shuffle. His cell phone shut off the night before the explosion. It's never turned back on. And no one's touched his bank account since that trip to the ATM. He just vanished. There have been a lot of lookalikes, like a hostile encounter with tourists in South America, or a raid at a Colorado home in 2014. We haven't had a verified sighting that we can turn back and say, yes, this definitely was Robert Fisher. Police even detained a man in Canada in 2004. Same build, same back scar, same gap where a gold tooth could be, but the fingerprints didn't match. It's hard to think that he's still alive, but we have to look at this and say, he's out there. If he were to walk through these doors right now, what would that conversation look like? Oh, wow. I I thought about that before. For a father to be able to do that to his own children, to his own wife. I need to know where you've been. I need to find out what did you do. How it got to that point and what was going on, I still don't have answers to that. Still don't understand it. Right now, finding the fugitive in a case this cold depends on new tips. If somebody has this secret or is keeping his secret, that weighs on you too. How long can you let this stay hidden. There wasn't a lot left unturned, so now it's just kind of revisiting a lot of those things and seeing if maybe there were people back then that didn't come forward or that you know we could re-interview. The FBI's latest push to the public, these age-enhanced photos of what Fisher could look like today. A little bit of information that could go a long way. Pastor Cantelmo working to keep the memory alive for a family that's gone. When people see pictures of Mary and the kids, just remember or know they were full of life. Mary, Brittany, and Bobby. I don't